this is an old school term. I want to talk to you from the perspective talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. <laughs> talk don't have a whole lot of weight to it. As God elevates you and take you to another place, don't get there and start talking too much. Sometimes questions make some of you relent from what God called you to do. But I'm trying to tell you that people asking counteractive questions to what God called you to do is normal to your next level. It's normal. Yeah, people questioning what's happening with me is normal. People questioning whether it's going to work out is normal. People questioning who I am and my identity is normal. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the recap. We are so happy that you guys decided to come back. And you know, the recap is going through some changes. So now we are, the recap is going to be during midweek. So on Wednesdays at 7. And we are so excited that you guys didn't just take time on Sunday. But now took time on Wednesday to come and have this conversation with us. So the recap is where we come. And we basically talk about Sunday's word. And all the things that are just still resting heavy on our spirits, Lord Jesus. Because that message... On Sunday had a had a lot for me to digest. So we're just gonna hop right into this thing. Um and who who's who's feeling like they want to start off with what their point is for the weekend? Oh, 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 she was ready. She was ready. That was a we call that alignment. Did y'all see that? Mm-hmm. All right, Chels, what's up? All right, so notebooks guys again. Yeah. <laughs> um, they've just been going at yeah. it just to be you know, they're listen. All right, we don't know. So the point today. Oh. <laughs> Come on, oh, what's here the comes point? The theatrics. Okay, what's the okay. Point? okay. The point today. When people get to criticizing, let your first conversation be with God. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to really not respond to critics, but how to respond by you know bringing bringing the conversation to you. Yeah. Um, that's really good because. Just being honest here, critics have always? gotten to me. <laughs> you know, yeah. critics can, present tense, can get to me. Um, and, you know, especially because sometimes the critics can be the one that's the closest to you. And you're just like, you're supposed to understand. Yeah. You're supposed to understand, but you're not understanding. Like, I want you to understand, but it's just like, okay, like, God didn't give you the vision to understand. He gave right. it to me. So, like, growing up in a way where you can be able to keep building and when the critics do come like taking that conversation to God and I believe those conversations will teach will strengthen you and teach you how to simply just not respond and they won't get to you as much so thank you God that's you yeah. yeah. and yeah. I just you know want to piggyback off Chelsea if, depending on how close that critic is if you're like a sibling or a friend or a cousin you can push them in some bushes <laughs> I don't know if that's I don't know if that's what the Lord would say. You know, we don't. In that case, we talk to him after. <laughs> uh, but no, Chelsea, I think that's a really good point, and I think that what's really hard about critics um, mm-hmm. is that part you talked about is that they didn't get the same message that you got, mm-hmm. um, and so it, it speaks a lot to you having to have enough confidence in what you actually heard. Um, because everybody else didn't get it. If everybody else got it, then it would be their assignment right. as well. And God right. did and God did not give that to them. Right. Uh, so it's really important to stay true to what you heard, as hard as that is, mm-hmm. and as messy as people can be, Lord Jesus. You just gotta stay true to it. Stay yeah. true. Yeah. And she, what what you said was it was very important. <laughs> very important. Especially because like I think sometimes we get caught up in wanting to respond to the person who criticizes us. Mm-hmm. But having your first conversation with God is extremely important. So yeah. Probably. And you just save energy. Right. Oh, that's yeah. a I yeah. think that's such a big that's such a big part about this is like saving your energy. Yeah. I like I hate when I have now arrived at the thing that I'm supposed to do and I'm so exhausted from mm-hmm. life. Or I don't know, sometimes in a day you'll have something you're really looking forward to at the end of the day. And you've got to go through all this stuff. By the time you get to the end of the day, all of your energy has been exhausted on what happened earlier in the day. And I think a lot of that happens when you're spending time entertaining critics. Right. And you're giving them all the energy that you're supposed to be using for the assignment that God has given to you. Um, And that can be tricky because reflexes are something else, let me tell you. But, um, but, 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 
don't lose, don't lose your energy. That's so true. And thank God for godly maturity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Godly maturity. Because had I not had him speak to me and give me guidance on how to handle the next steps or even while they're criticizing me, just to stay faithful in it, back in the day, it would have been something. Not <laughs> For godly maturity. Yeah. Are we thinking for growth? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's spiritual growth mm-hmm. for real. It is. Yes. It really is. Have y'all seen that meme? It's just like, grow with it. That's how, that's, how I felt. <laughs> that's how I felt listening right. to this message today. Who else? Who else? Sound I, Melissa, just, I could hey, feel that it was you <laughs> coming with the Lego notebook, which is my favorite. Wait, let me see. It's <laughs> my favorite uh, notebook. And lovely. then you can just take these and cut, but we're not going to do a tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> We'll save that for the next episode of um, Recap. (laughs) So let me see here because there were many points and and so you just want to marinate. So, but, oh, before I get to my point, I have to say this. Did y'all see how Pastor pulled in a little bit of the message from what was it the the first Sunday of this month about mastering the level? Yes. Yeah. 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 Pastor, yeah. you did good with that. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know if it was the learn to perfect where you are now, or mm-hmm. I am all on board with changing. Yes. Yeah. Just speak what I said, and then we'll come back with the next one. She said we're just going to listen yeah. to yeah. every time. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to go with this right here because this is what I am. Okay. Sometimes you have to go through a season of what if while you're minding the business. Ooh, that, was good. that was good. That, that was good. one right mm-hmm. there. That's so weird. Now, that touches <laughs> because it don't be like what is from other people. Yes. It be what is from me to right. me. Yes. Like, right. oh, sis, how you going to do that? Right. You sit down and think about it. And then it because now you know. Let's look. Chase, is that you? Let me try to work out. You got to just. I, I, I'm my own worst critic, and I, I'm yeah. my naysayer. Yes. Like everybody else, I can block them out, but me, along with me, oh yes. boy, depending on the day or the time or what I'm going, I will wear myself out. And so yeah. it's like currently a struggle to be like, no, you're fine. Everything's going to be okay. We're not even going to worry about that. We're just going to keep moving forward. Like, it literally, this week, I've been pushing myself in bushes. And we've just been going back and forth with the bush pushing because I can't seem to turn. Yeah, the bush pushing. I can't seem to turn that voice yeah. off or turn it down or mute you or something. She needs to mute it. Mute she her. needs to. Mm-hmm. In a minute, okay, I'm gonna lock her in a closet. But that part, that's the that's the season I'm in. So that is so real, Pastor. So I've just been marinating on that all week, just trying to get that yeah, under good. control because mm-hmm. it's out. That's good. That's really good, and it's really easy to be your own worst, yeah. Yeah. worst enemy. Yeah. That's why, Pastor. When people always do messages on like haters and stuff, sometimes I'm just like. I never resonate from the external hater part. Like, yeah. if if I have haters, I don't know where y'all are at. Um, <laughs> like, I, 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 I just don't like, I just, I just, I, th- that's not been my personal struggle. But I do think, and I think that sometimes I used to dismiss messages that were about haters. So I was like, oh, like, that's not, that's not in my life. But then I realized how much I hate on myself. Yes. Um, and I was like, okay, no, we need to tap into this a little bit further. Um, and I think Pastor had a message a while ago that was about, it was a while, a while ago. But it's when he was talking about um, how there's not just one of you, there's two. And he was talking about the flesh yeah. and the spirit. Mm-hmm. So there's sometimes when, when your flesh is a hater on your spirit. So that mm-hmm. internal conflict is, I think, a very, you said every day. Every day. <laughs> um, I think that that is a, that is a very real thing. Uh, so for me, it's been a challenge that I do not dismiss, um, that, that I do not dismiss messages about criticism and haters. Right. Um when I don't necessarily feel like I have those on the outside, right. but I understand what that looks like on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I mean, me versus me is the toughest thing. That's well. literally yeah. the yeah. toughest thing. Yeah. Every like, level is always. more intense. Yes. yes. And that, ooh, I'm, but can we talk about what he said, though, to help us combat that? Yeah. He said to us that it's what you say that shapes your life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. there's power yes. in what you say. Yeah. And yes. we have to know that if we can speak a thing, and it be, 
Right. And we have to turn how we talk about who we are, how we talk about what we want, how we talk about how we get there mm-hmm. in a different way. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so let's not forget that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So yes. we need to always speak life and we need to always speak from a positive place. Because yes. once we start talking downward, then our whole life will start exemplifying what we say about it, which is yes. balance. Mm-hmm. So let's remember that we have power mm-hmm. in what we say and yes. the power of what we say helps to shape our reality. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the consistency of how like of you saying those words, like if the if mm-hmm. the thoughts and the self to self attacks are like yeah. loud are like louder or they're more frequent. Mm-hmm. I just need to be speaking more to right. like combat that. Yeah. And yeah. the more I speak like because at the end of the day, I know like the things that God has spoken about me to me that's going to supersede anything because that's the truth. Yeah. Like, so I know, like, in the end, like, mm-hmm. the, the truth I'm speaking is is literally going to win. Like, it's, yes. it's, it has to. it's going to win. Mm-hmm. So just if it, if them negative yeah. thoughts or the, the stuff you know is not true, even the what ifs, like, are coming to you, we coming back to you like, <laughs> what you said? Yes. I wish you would. Yeah, and I think that, I think that um, a lot of, and I I feel like one of the personal things for me, and just like I think that what my relationship with God has been, it has been like this thing about volume and like what volume wins. Because mm-hmm. I think that a lot of times God comes in a whisper to you. Mm-hmm. Um, but your own personal thoughts are screaming at you. Um, and so I, it, it's so, I'm so glad you brought up that. It's so important to speak those things because as you're speaking those things, like you're adding decibels to the whisper mm-hmm. of what, of what God has said. And you're making that voice so much stronger. Um, because me, I, in my head, I am just screaming, <laughs> literally screaming. Um, and, and, you know, Praise and worship is not my minister there. Um, <laughs> um, but um, I, I think that I think that that's important because I, there there is one thing in hearing it and believing it, but there's another thing in adding power and backing that and backing that thing up and fortifying that in your mind to where that then becomes the louder thing. Um, because I don't know if the I don't know if it ever disappears like your voice like I don't I don't necessarily think that it disappears but there's a way for for what God has said to 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 supersede that um was that the right C supersede okay I just wanted to make sure I was I didn't know if you can't do that then tell on yourself go straight to your daddy yeah and tell him what your weakness is yeah and he'll fix it for you and then you'll get to the point where you can continue to speak back to yourself and over other situations because you always go to him first. So yeah. some people will try to separate, okay, prayer from talking to God is really the same thing. It's just like if I call up a homegirl or homeboy and I'm talking to you, that's exactly how he wants us to talk to him anyway. So just have that conversation with him. Yeah, definitely sure agree. So. Definitely agree. Key, yeah. what's, what, what's your point? Or have we already talked all the points out? No, I mean, I mean, staying on that, that topic right there, I mean, I think sometimes we forget that every time we level up, the wavelength of things that we hear actually increase. So Mm -hmm. um, the me versus me part is extremely, you know, crazy to me because uh, I think you're your biggest critic, especially like for people who are former athletes or athletes, you know, your your biggest hater, your biggest critic is yourself. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to what God has called you to do, um, sometimes we become so focused on, you know, the inner thoughts of ourselves that we'll, you know, lessen the thought of who we actually are. Yeah. But I think going off that, just alone, the biggest takeaway for me was when Pastor was actually explaining to us who Nehemiah was, um, him being the middleman at first. Um, and I think sometimes <clears throat> being in the middle, uh, you actually have the, uh, you feel like you don't have leverage because everybody else uh, is on the outside basically telling you who you are. And I think sometimes we have to actually laugh at those things because they don't know where we're going. Mm -hmm. And so Nehemiah being in the position that he was in, um, I mean, power to him, man, because he's so (laughs) strong. (laughs) Like, just being like, just think about it. You know, you're you're the person reporting to the king and now you have to go do what the king tells you to do. Um, Just think about those people who would say, you know, he's just a runner or he just does what the king tells him to do. Yeah. And you, you are thought of as less than. 
But ultimately, I'm in the presence. The presence matters more than what I'm told to do. So mm-hmm. I think that was I think that was deep. Come on, that's true. <laughs> that's really good. Thank you. And he, and he mastered the level. Yeah. He mastered where he was in order for God to take him higher. Right. And I think a lot of times when we get a word and we know the word is coming, mm-hmm. we advance ourselves to get there faster than our mm-hmm. training ground. Right, yeah. And so we need to stay in training mode mm-hmm. to be able to develop the skills that we need to be able to get to that next level. So that was a very, very yeah. good example. Yeah. And the tricky, go ahead, Chels, because you sure? sure? Yes. Okay, okay. Well, you know, I can talk. Go ahead. <laughs> what I was going to say about the training ground is please take it seriously. As if, like, what you know is coming, the, how faithful you're going to be to that and how seriously you're going to do for that, like, do it in the training ground. Because speaking from experience, you won't be in the training ground until God says, okay, like, you you yeah. put everything that I wanted you to put in this area in this season mm-hmm. because you will find yourself continuously in the training ground and it's in the training ground just as pastor spoke today how he said like when he learned before he started like pastoring what it meant to how how he learned like how to respond to critics or not respond to them whatever it is that you're supposed to learn in your training ground please take it seriously like it's it's nothing to be played with it's nothing to be looked at small he said despite not humble beginnings or small beginnings like that's a real thing because it's it's really here in your training ground mm-hmm. that's that's preparing you for like what you whatever you think the big is or whatever the next is. Yeah. It's it's gonna be those humble beginnings that's like, yep, this is how I do what I do because I you know yeah. what we talk yeah. about David all the time. David did play around in the pasture. Like how he how he, he operated in the pasture <laughs> with the sheep. He operated the same the same way in the palace. So like that's just very important to not not yeah. play around with that and really like when you gonna when you gonna be faithful, like be faithful like a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I mean too people gotta understand too in the training ground you gotta be uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think sometimes you forget about that. Being uncomfortable, like think about Nehemiah, he went from being a cupbearer, you know, to building a wall. Mm-hmm. That's very that's totally different thing that's what i was going to say is that i think a lot of times the the biggest part of it the discomfort is that the training and the what god has spoke over you like it's not a one-to-one matchup and that is i think that's the tricky that's the trickiest part Mm -hmm. because you can be in a space where you're like i speaking personally (laughs) um where you're just like i don't like i like i can't connect the dots (laughs) like and, and and i think that there's a faithfulness that you have to have in not being able to connect the dots mm-hmm. um, and in understanding. I remember, Melissa, we had a conversation when I was I was transitioning to a new job. And I was like, I don't quite know why I'm going to this job. And you were like, there's something there's something in the job that you need to get. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that like that has that conversation has stayed with me for a long time because there are many a days at the job. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> Please tell <laughs> when you're ready to tap out. Okay. Uh, um, but I, I, like, I've kept that conversation. Like, there's something that God, like, wants you to learn here. And I think that that's what the training ground is. It's not necessarily the skill. And I think that we focus so much on the skill. Yeah. But it's what you gain in the space. Yeah. Um, and it becomes a conversation of, are you valuing more just the skill? Mm-hmm. And the skill is usually a lot of what you're going to be able to show. Are you valuing more what you can be able to show or your heart in this space right now and what is going to be posturing you throughout the rest of your journey? Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's something that I have had to personally adjust, something that when they put on the full armor of God, I'd be putting on the full armor of God every day for work. Amen. Amen. Lock in, (laughs) shields. Like, I might look like an Avenger. I don't know. But it's like a whole (laughs) armor thing going on. Um, Yes. um, and But I think that that's important because I I used to value a lot, like, what my hands could produce and what I could visibly see. And it's very hard to hold on to the things that you can't see and what's actually Mm -hmm. being worked out inside of you. Um, So, yeah. But I mean, your presence matters. Like yeah. I said last week, I mean, like, even Pastor touched on it today when, uh, you know, he was talking about the simple fact of us understanding that, you know, sometimes we have to realize, you know, it's, it's about us being there, mm-hmm. being steady in what it is that you're doing. Um, you got to be planted in what it is that God has called you to. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we, we often think about, like you said, what my hands can produce. 
Uh, it's not really about that. It's about what your heart is producing. Yeah, so. yeah, I agree. I'll go into my point, and then we can just go ahead and wrap. Mine is very short because I've oh. talked throughout the. Don't do that. No, you are. Don't do that. Do that. She's a crit. It's the critics. <laughs> you see? Love you. It's just. Critics. I shouldn't have you responded. I should have just, <laughs> <laughs> I should have just started <laughs> talking to God <laughs> automatically <laughs> after I, I heard you. after I heard the critics, but um. I think that's something that was interesting to me, and, and and I'm saying it after what I just talked, what I was just talking about off of your point, Chelsea, is that um, there's a point where Pastor talks about that he Nehemiah went from building a wall to building a gate, mm-hmm. and he said he went he he went from building up something that is supposed to keep people out mm-hmm. to building something where you have the discernment to let people mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. and I was thinking I was like the mature I was thinking of the maturity of the discernment there because. Me, silly me, um, I like to build stuff. I do. And if I'm building a wall and then my next instruction is to build a gate, I wouldn't have processed it that way at all. I wouldn't have been like, okay, that was first step, you know, <laughs> protecting ourselves. Next step, okay, God, we're doing something new here. And we're like, like I was been like, this part of the wall, the gate part of the wall. <laughs> okay, you should have told me to build the whole wall so I could have left the area for the gate. Um, And I was thinking about how, like, in those moments, and and I think as we're talking about levels, to, like, be be very much so present in your now so that you can understand like when you're, when you are moving on. I think that sometimes God's trying to elevate us and God's trying to get us to another level or he's, he's opened the door to another level. And because we don't see it as another level, because it doesn't look like necessarily what we thought it was going to look like that we completely just don't acknowledge it. Um, and I think that you miss out on the opportunity because we, we, as humans, we need to see growth. Right. And I think sometimes we might be in a space where we're beating ourselves up because we haven't recognized the growth that actually has happened mm-hmm. or the steps that have actually been made. Um, and so I just, I, I had to take a moment because I was like, God, I, I'm thankful for the gates and I'm sorry for the gates that I missed. And I thought that they were just additions to the wall. Um, and like God helped me to open my eyes and be mindful enough to be able to understand like when this is a gate, when this is something new, when this is the next level that you are elevating me to. Um, cause you can start beating yourself up thinking you've been in le- on level one for th- right. a million years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was my point. Um, and I think it, I think it tied well with yours. Um, and we did a lot there. We did a lot, but, um, you know, I'm thankful that God continues to, to give pastor words where we can just come and sit and meditate on them and actually apply them into Mm -hmm. life. Um, um, I, I think so much of Christianity is difficult because it's like, that sounds really great, but what is the practical application part of that? Um, so I'm, Yes, yeah. and it's hard. We don't have any anyone to talk to, so I'm thankful at TBH that we even have this space that we get to talk to you guys, that you guys get to talk to us, um, because it's it, it it's difficult. People who've been saying Christianity is just like this easy love. Yeah, we love not. you. It's it's not. Stop telling those lies. Stop telling the lies. Um, it takes work. It takes work. It takes work, and it takes it takes community in spaces mm-hmm. like these. Um, so I'm thankful for this conversation. I'm thankful that you guys joined us in this conversation. And we are so excited to see you next week. Before we go, we are going to give you guys a challenge. And I think I heard it because when I heard it, something said, save that, save that. Um, when we were talking about enemies and haters and critics, and maybe it's not an external critic, but it might be an internal critic. And Shayla, you said mute yourself. So I think that that is going to be the challenge for this week to mute yourself. Um, and in and in the practice of, of muting yourself, be really in tune to, to to speaking the things that God has spoken over your life to combat everything that is going on and what can be a very chaotic uh, headspace. Um, so we love you guys. We're so thankful that you came and to sit and chat with us. Um, and we will see you all again next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.